in this lesson we are going to introduce you to the essential tool windows in the Ghidra user interface. So let's now take a look at Ghidra's user interface. Start up Ghidra and remember we had loaded the project in the last lesson, uh, the lesson one project with a file example one. So when we go ahead and start Ghidra we see our tip of the day which is probably a good idea to read that. So let's go ahead and close that tip and here we have our Ghidra. Um, basically this is our pro project viewer and we can just minimize that. Now when you open Ghidra you're gonna have a few windows already open already docked into your interface. All these windows that you see here, the listings, the program tree, and the data type manager, you can pull up from the Windows menu bar. But by default, this is what you should start out with. And let's let's talk about the these interfaces, these tools. So your program tree shows you your files, and then it has the sections of the file. Section segments, depending on what file is, it may have a different name, but basically the different logical components of your file. For example, if you know um, a little bit about reverse engineering, you know that generally executable code is stored in the text section. So if you want to look at the text section and just start looking at code, you can click on the text section. And it'll take you there. And here you see this is the text section. And if you're familiar with an ELF file, you'll see the first thing is actually the ELF header. Okay? But if we scroll down here, there's going to be code and things like that. If you are familiar, again, with uh, programming a little bit and the layout of files, especially L files, um, you'll have a section called data, and that's where your data is stored. So you click on data, and you can see we have some data here. There's actually not much data because this, the, this, trivial, this file is a trivial example. Um, we also have our BSS section here for data that is not actually stored in the file that is uninitialized data as BSS. Okay, and you have your other sections, your your uh, got PLT, got dynamic, um, PLT in it, you know, all these these random sections. You don't have to worry about those right now, but that is your program tree and allow you to quickly jump from one part of a file to another part of a file. Okay. Your data type manager is going to be really important in the future. As you work with complex projects, you will start to see usually structures or classes. If you're familiar with C++, um, C we call them structures. In C++, they take the structure and they, they add upon it and they turn it into a, something called a class. But class is basically like a structure. And this allows you to um, build complex data types such that if you have a bunch of memory and you know how it's laid out, what type of data it is, you can actually define that and uh, work with it a lot easier. We'll talk about that later. Okay, that's This is going to be a really useful um, tool later. Uh, but this is, your, this is your bread and butter here, is your listings, which is your disassembler window. And you can see here, as I just scroll down, you can see some disassembled code. Okay, And we'll talk much more about what you can do with that later, but just know if, you, if you're already familiar with assembly and disassembly, you can just start working right here. But there's a lot of, of, of things you can do once you're in the disassembler window or the listing window. You can start labeling data, you can start um, analyzing things, and it, it's going to be really cool. But that's one of your main windows. Now, one window I think that is a, a requirement is the functions window. So again, we'll eventually hit all these at some point. Um, probably in the next lesson, I'll, I'll go through the different windows here. But if you want to just get up and running and you already have a little bit of experience, um, I, w I want this lesson to help you get started. So the functions window is important. Click on that and it will dock here. You can drag it around and redock it. So anyway, your functions window. This is going to show you the functions that are defined. So if you're familiar with C, you know there's usually a function called main. And you can just click on that and it will take you right to that. And you can see this is our main code um, for the 
program, the, the trivial example program that we have, um, example one. Okay, but you can, um, if you have more functions, you can click around there. There's only one real main function here. You can see other functions um, that the, the um, C runtime or the C compiler put in here, but um, we only I only wrote one main function for here. But if you had to, you know, looking at real code, you'd have all, all times of functions, and th there are functions you you can see here like um, printf and putf, but these are actually not functions that are implemented there, are functions that are actually somewhere else. This is just a little stub that calls the functions that are in a different library. But anyway, here's your function window. You're going to want that open. So what other windows do we have? Well, we're going to talk about another window today, and then we're going to, we're, we're going to call it a day for this lesson. But the other really important window that you want to open is your decompiler window. Because if you're doing disassembly, Obviously, your, your listing window, your disassembler, is, is key. But let's look at this code. Okay, It's kind of confusing, right? And if you're not familiar with assembly, that's going to be look like garbage to you. It's not going to make any sense. And even if you are good at assembly, if you can read C code, it's a lot easier. right? So the decompiler window is the Ghidra's representation, what it thinks it, this code would be if it was in C. And you can see this is basically exactly what the code is. It's actually pretty amazing how, how well it, it did in this case. Um, that's basically exactly the code I wrote. Now, you're going to find that sometimes your decompiled code looks like a mess, like it makes no sense. You have to do some work on it because, well, you can disassemble a binary directly to assembly. It's a one-to-one -one operation to go from assembly to binary and binary back to assembly. Turning something, once you take C code, there's many C code, there's many different things in C that could actually turn into the same binary uh, representation. So it's not one-to-one, -one, it's many-to-one. Actually, it could be many-to-many. -many. So decompiling is, is not a perfect art form. But you can see here, Gita did an excellent job. And what this is actually extremely readable code, right? You have printf, enter value one, scanf, printf, enter value two, scanf. Then we have an, an addition statement um, with, a, with su a, a sum variable, local 14 here. And local if lo local 14 is less than b, which is and you can already see if I scroll over that, look at that. As I scrolled over that, you can see that the 0xb, it also shows you what it is in decimal, so 11, right? So that's, it's really useful. And then if it's less than 11, the sum of value 1 and value 3 is less than or equal to 10. Otherwise, it's the sum of value 1 and value 3 is greater than 10, right? So this is very readable code. And that's a huge benefit of Ghidra. Again, in IDA, you would have to pay a lot of money to get that that functionality. So that's just your basic intro to the Ghidra interface with some of the windows that are that you're going to be using all the time. In the next lesson we will talk about some of the other windows, the other tools basically that you that Ghidra has that you can use that that may be useful for you. But these these ones right here are your bread and butter. Alright, so join us next lesson. Does your organization need instructor-led training in advanced technical topics? Paladin Group can provide that. Check out our webpage.